When we leave the Carpathian Basin through the breathtaking gorge called the Frog Pass, we enter one of Romania's heartlands, the Moldva region. This territory is the ancient center of the Orthodox faith, famous for its beautiful monasteries built between the 15th and the 17th centuries. The first monastery on our way is Agapia. The settlement was founded between 1527 and 1546. Ruined and built again, burned and remade again, Agapia has become a very charming hermitage. The present monastery was built in 1642. In the 19th century, extensive renovations were made. However, the monastery again burned partially down in 1903. All this has not changed the appealing character of the buildings and the village itself, which primarily serves the nuns of the ecclesiastical complex. typical roadside scene in a Romanian village. In the evening the cattle is going home. The administrational and urban center of the region is Suceva, a lively and lovely town which also has a few impressive churches and monasteries. Our hotel there is a very good place. The rooms are furnished rather luxuriously, however in a retro Stalinist style. A little training comes handy before we set out to the monasteries. Still in Suceva, we are witnessing an outdoor religious service. Yeah. 
Opposite to the monastery, there is the largest city church where people are praying all day long. While the city is bustling, we buy a few food items on the market to prepare for our excursion to the monasteries. We can hardly wait to finally enter the first painted monastery, the goal of our trip here. However, before entering we still have to have a look at the crowds of tourists and the merchants of folkloric items who eagerly fish for buyers. Voronet is one of the three most famous monasteries. The competition among them has not been decided yet. In 1547, under the supervision of the Metropolitan Bishop Grigore Roska, whose tomb can be now found here, the porch was added to the former medieval building and all the exterior paintings were created. From the very beginning of its history, the monastery was blessed with monks of extremely high spiritual stature and it was a true example of Romanian hermitage. Monastic life at Voronezh was interrupted in 1785 due to the annexation of Bukovina 
to the Habsburg Empire and it became a working monastery again only in 1991 with the arrival of a community of nuns. This new community today combines a religious life of prayer and worship with housekeeping and farm work, running a painting workshop and providing guided tours for visitors. Voronezh is considered by many to be the Sistine Chapel of the East. Due to the magnificent frescoes on the west wall, a representation of the Last Judgment. In addition, Voronezh's blue has been added to the lexicon of art alongside colors such as the Titian red and the Veronese green. On this blue background can be found the tree of Jesse, or the genealogy of the Redeemer Jesus Christ. Greco-Latin philosophers are depicted in the borders to the left and right, Aristotle and Plato being amongst the better known philosophers. The architectural structure of the Moldova monasteries show a mixture of Western Gothic style, created probably by Hungarian and Saxon masons, and Eastern elements. The paintings are by Orthodox Romanian masters. tomb of Saint Pius Daniel, the hermit, who became the first abbot of Oronets, can also be found in the narthex, watched over by a burning flame. A piece of high artistic value is the gilded iconostasis, its imperial doors being a true masterpiece of sculpture in wood. Also of a great value is the throne of the metropolitan bishop Grigore Rosca. The paintings in the nave and at the holy altar are blackened from the smoke of hundreds of years of burning candles and are waiting for restoration. village. The houses are different from the Hungarian villages in Transylvania, but the huge decorated gates are similar to that of the Seikais. Because those logs are fine trees and they were freshly cut, freshly peeled right now. The second famous monastery is Moldovica. The original building erected on the site was the one built by Alexander the Kind-Hearted around 1410, but it collapsed at the beginning of the 16th century because of the very heavy rains and ground sliding. The ruins can still be seen today. The present Moldovita monastery dates back to 1532 and was sponsored by the ruling prince Petru Rares. It has the characteristics of a fortress with imposing towers and high, thick walls. Yeah. 
According to the architectural tradition set by Stephen the Great, the church has an open porch. The interior and exterior walls have been decorated with scenes from 16th century Moldavian daily life. But the most interesting painting is the Siege of Constantinople on the south facade relating to the Romanians' fight against foreign invasions, especially the Turks. The painting combines scenes of the Siege of Constantinople from 1453 with others referring to a previous such attempt made by the Persians in 626. The painter was Toma of Suceava, who worked here around 1537. Against an intense blue background you can also see a hymn to the Virgin, as well as a lovely tree of Jesse with dozens of figures. The Last Judgment is also present and displays apocalyptic images of dignitaries being taken along by Saturn to hell. Another valuable fresco is that of the Customs of Heaven, also present at other Moldavian monasteries. This motif was inspired by folk legends. In the customs of heaven, the souls are judged as soon as they have died and go over several barriers before they enter paradise, with the help of the angels, after having paid their tribute to devil publicans. The inside of the church also prides with beautiful frescoes as well as some fine pieces of wooden furniture. The intricate geometry of the cupola shows Eastern architectural influences. Suchavita is chronologically the last and greatest monastic ensemble among the painted monasteries. It has the appearance of a real fortress with towers, buttresses and watch roads. It was erected in 1581 by Gheorghe Movila, bishop of Radauti. According to legends, an old woman had been working there for 30 years, carrying stones in her ox wagon for the construction of the monastery. This is the reason why a female head is carved on a black stone in the monastery's yard. The fortress structure of the site had a defensive role. It actually prevented the mural paintings made in the 1590s from serious damage, as it happened with frescoes of other painted monasteries. Suchevita prides with the best preserved paintings both outside and inside. Mai doi 
Frescoes are painted in purple, red and blue against an emerald green background. There is plenty of gold too, taken from the art of miniature. They belong to Romanian masters of the Moldavian school of painting. They have a strongly narrative character and many of them represent scenes taken from daily life of 16th century Moldavia. The most outstanding paintings are the Ladder of Virtue, presenting the angels who assist the righteous enter the paradise while sinners are punished by a grinning demon. Also the Last Judgment, left unfinished, because its painter fell down from the scaffoldings and died. <laughs> Graffiti and inscriptions by tourists of several centuries can be seen all over the place. Some of them date from the 16th century. Risipește negura greșelilor mele, Dumnezeiască mireasă, Cu strălucirea luminii tale, Ceea ce ai născut lumina cea Dumnezeiască și veșnică, Și acum și pururea, și în vecii vecilor, amin, Să mă duiește curată neputința sufletului meu, Umbrănicindu-mă cercetării tale, Și sănătate cu rugăciunile tale dăruiește. Rugăciunea mea voi vărsa către Domnul, Și lui voi spune scârbele mele, Că s-au The painted monasteries of Moldova are such a cultural and spiritual treasure of southeastern Europe that are well worth the visit and give a deep and long lasting impression. Și îți gonește asupriri 